Hello, everybody. Welcome into Perspectives, the home edition. We're glad you could be with us today. We have an interesting guest. We've had him before. He's very knowledgeable in governmental and world politics affairs. Uh, Dr. Kenneth Hicks, who is a uh, government uh, instructor here at uh, RSU. Dr. Hicks, welcome. Thanks for having me back. Good to have you, my friend. We may have to put you on the payroll. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> a lot of things going on in Ukraine. And I just uh, a moment ago uh, went through CNN, um, uh, New York Times, some other sources on my phone to kind of get an update of where things stand. There, there, there are two conversations I want to talk to you about. The stability of, of, of Putin, we'll get to second, but mm -hmm. this, this war in Ukraine, I have never seen in my lifetime such courage of a people defending their homeland. Have you witnessed this before? <sighs> Uh, not in my lifetime either. This is uh, an unprecedented event. Uh, there has not been a war on this scale in, in Europe uh, since the end of World War II. Um, this is clearly uh, a war of choice uh, on Putin's part. Uh, he, uh, I, I think this is, you know, an example of, of uh, you know, of, of what extreme Russian nationalism looks like. Uh, I think part of, to the extent that Putin is supported by the Russian public, it is because he, uh, he expresses a particular kind of uh, very chauvinistic version of, of Russian nationalism, uh, which harkens back to uh, the days of empire. Uh, I think uh, in his view, I think his calculations are, and what he's, you know, what he's written about, uh, I've read a lot, of, uh, a lot of Putin's essays over the past 20 years or so, and, uh, you know, he looks especially at the Ukrainian uh, independence movement as uh, something that is, you know, he, he looks at it in zero-sum terms. Uh, he really believes that Ukrainian independence uh, means a permanent uh, diminution uh, of Russian power and influence. And so for him, I think he believes that Russia is only strong to the extent that it is an empire. And so, you know, yes. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Uh, been a couple of developments this morning, physical developments uh, outside of the war itself. Uh, two very large yachts have been uh, uh, surrounded by American vessels and allied vessels, and they're uh, uh, preparing to take them into custody. The... Uh, they also spotted uh, Putin's yacht, which is a rather large boat, if you will, or ship, docked in a safe harbor in Russia. <clears throat> and they're pointing to the fact that uh, only Putin would have the kind of money tucked away or hidden away that would allow him to own such a vessel as head of his own country. And I expect throughout the day we're going to hear more of these vessels being being taken what happens now to the folk who are on those vessels will they be released to go back to russia or will they, they be held as political prisoners of the allies i would imagine they'd be released i, I don't think there's any advantage uh to uh to you know to the u.s mm -hmm. or to european powers to hold those folks uh, i can't I, i'm not a lawyer so i can't really speak to uh, what potential crimes they may be alleged to have committed. Uh, I know there are, are increasing, there's, a, there's an increasing amount of discussion in the media as to whether Putin is committing war crimes uh, at the moment in Ukraine. I think that's pretty likely if they're using uh, chain munitions and uh, you know, other kinds of, uh, of, of highly deadly uh, indiscriminate you know, kinds of, of uh, weaponry uh, that uh, you know, that he's, he's certainly stepping into that, uh, that territory. And I think that gives the lie to Putin's argument that he gave, you know, he made earlier today that the, that the invasion was going to plan. I think, uh, I think Russian military planners uh, basically uh, had to run uh, the planned invasion through Putin. And I think Putin's assumptions uh, were that the Ukrainian people uh, would accept the invasion, that it would be a fait accompli, that it would happen within a week. 
uh, that, you know, much like what happened uh, in the, you know, the revolution of dignity uh, in 20, uh, you know, 14, uh, I think, uh, I think Putin believed that, that they, you know, they could run off uh, Zelensky just as easily uh, as the, the previous uh, pro, you know, Putin uh, Ukrainian president, you know, kind of fled uh, the minute things started getting tense. I think Zelensky has uh, defied those expectations and, and very heroically. Uh, you know, I think that's, uh, that's been one of the things that has, uh, that has fallen outside of, of Putin's, uh, you, know, uh, you know, set of assumptions. And it's interesting to note, too, that the people of Russia are coming forward saying, wait a minute, we didn't call for this war. Yeah. Um, I think that that speaks to the extent to which Putin is, is increasingly operating in a, in a very isolated environment. Uh, since COVID-19, uh, Putin is widely reported to uh, not be, uh, you know, allowing people to come into his presence. Uh, in fact, I think uh, one of the conditions for anyone meeting with him personally uh, is that you have to go through a two-week quarantine period. Um, and I, I think increasingly, you know, there is what I like to call a, a you know, a life cycle of dictatorships. Um, and he is, I think, increasingly, you know, hitting towards the, the tertiary phase where he's not listening to anybody. Uh, and he's, he's probably losing support. Um, and, and, you know, he doesn't care uh, so long as, uh, as the oligarchs are, are terrified of him. And I think they still are. Uh, but I think the more uh, of their toys get taken from them and the more uh, the Ukrainian uh, invasion uh, bogs down and, and becomes problematical, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, this could, uh, you know, signal some cracks in his hold on, uh, on the political elites of Russia. Uh, it's important to keep in mind every authoritarian uh, government and every authoritarian leader has a constituency. There are people who benefit from their governance. And that, that's been the case uh, with Russia for a very long time. It's a kleptocracy. Uh, and he is the head kle you know, kleptocrat. He, uh, he basically says to the oligarchs, you may skim as much money out of the Russian economy as you like, uh, but the minute I don't like what you're doing, I can take it all away from you. And that's why every, you know, every Russian, including Putin, they spend you know, a good portion of their time finding places to park money. Uh, so, you know, to me, I think uh, I hate to see it happening to the people of Ukraine. Uh, and, and I think it really does kind of clarify things domestically here. I think it's becoming increasingly hard uh, for, um, you know, for, for Americans to say, yeah, Putin's a great, Putin's a strong leader. Um, you know, when, when he has, uh, you know, undertaken uh, an action that I think uh, is, is so widely reviled. It's intriguing to me that no one has pointed out that there are those, and I'm not going to drag you into this, but I, I will say and take the heat for it myself. We have broadcast outlets in this country who are standing in support of what's going on in Ukraine without regard to the people, uh, to, to the situation with the size of the country and the military that, that we see coming in. And yet at the same time, the people of Ukraine are standing in solidarity to protect their homeland. And they're not talking about that. They're talking about the strength and and the the agility and the planning and all that's going on with Putin and what a great military strategist he is, which is not true. No, I think it's uh, you know part of the part of the reason why Russia is having so many difficulties is I, you know Putin reformed the military uh, a few years back. I'm not convinced that the reforms were particularly uh, effective. Uh, it, it does not appear that Russian tanks are, are particularly uh, of high quality. They have an asserted air superiority to this day. Uh, this, is some, I, you know, this is something that runs directly contrary to, to American military doctrine. Uh, we would never have rolled armored columns, columns into uh, a country that we did not control the skies over. Uh, you know, and, and they're allowing 
there, I, I believe there are still Ukrainian aircraft flying. Uh, there are still Ukrainian drones uh, launching mm -hmm. attacks against uh, against armored columns. Uh, I, I think it's a it's a serious uh, you know flaw in their design that they that they really did believe that the Ukrainians couldn't uh, put up a serious uh, a serious fight. I thought it was intriguing that they tried to take out or did take out a uh, uh, television broadcast antenna. Yes. And yet failed to do anything about the internet. Yeah. Well, and they seized, uh, they seized the airport uh, to the north of, uh, of Kiev, uh, yeah. but they couldn't hold on to it uh, because they didn't follow up and, and establish a perimeter. These are basic things. If you're going to use paratroopers, they have to be supported. <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't drop people in, you know, a hundred miles <laughs> behind lines and then expect them to hold on. They, you know, they seized the airport and then they got driven out. Uh, again, I largely, was... largely because of, you know, this again has something to do with the, with the configuration and the nature of the Russian military. They do not um, emphasize improvisation uh, in the Russian military. They establish, they have very rote, uh, you know, approaches to, to military maneuvers. Uh, they do not tolerate, uh, you know, going off script. Uh, and the result is, you know, the, the, the old saying, everybody's got a plan until they get hit in, hit in the mouth. Uh, well, the Russian military got hit in the mouth and they really didn't have, you know, a way of, of you know, a, a way of adapting. We're going to take a short break, Dr. Hicks. We've got about a minute left in this segment. When we come back, I want to talk to you about some things I saw on the CBS Morning News today about how some very small pieces of metal are stopping their tanks <laughs> and equally small pieces of metal are stopping their trucks. Stay with us. We'll be back with more with Dr. Hicks right after this.